Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope that you are doing awesome. I am doing awesome. I already got dinner ready. I already ate. Um, but dinner is ready for my husband. I already fed my son. So I am on top of it tonight. But I woke up at 4.45 this morning. I'm sleepy. I was doing something while ago at my computer and I was falling asleep. So I made me some mocha coffee. So I hope that doesn't keep me up tonight. But anyway, it's better than me snoozing while I'm on here. And so what I want to talk to you about tonight is, are you ready? Are you ready? I hope you are because we don't know when we don't know when we're going so we need to be ready so we're going to look up some scriptures tonight about are you ready for the rapture um, and just talk about the rapture and talk about all the times that Jesus referred to it and I believe Paul did too um, Probably some more others that did also. But anyway, we're going to look up some scriptures about it and talk about it. I listened to a guy talk about it this morning. And uh, I go, you know what? I, f I think that's why I got up early. Because I started watching prophetic preachers when I got up this morning. And I can't even remember who I watched. But I watched several today. And uh, I just feel like the time is nearby. Do not set dates or times because only God knows. But we do need to be ready. We need to be ready. Um, we need to be eagerly waiting too. So let's jump into some prayer and then we will jump into some scripture and we'll see if somebody wants to get saved and I may not be on here for very long because I'm still feeling pretty sleepy but I'll try to hang as long as I can God we just thank you God we just thank you that I'm listening to the Holy of Holies by Cutlass and uh, thank you God for sending your son and that he is our bridge between us and you he bridges the gap so thank you for sending us Jesus God God you are on your throne and you are in control you are the Je great Jehovah the great I am God you are from everlasting to everlasting we are so thankful that you are our creator our provider our sustainer our protector you are our shelter in the storm God you are our strength and our refuge and just so much more God that you do for us every day God we just thank you because you are magnificent and powerful and mighty you are the righteous judge but you also are loving and kind and patient waiting for all to come to Jesus not wanting any to perish God and that is why you haven't sent Jesus yet because you are long suffering towards us while we're in our sin and uh, you want all to be in heaven and not to stay here and perish God, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we cry out to the lost, God. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they can be saved. We pray for our hearts to be softened, God. We pray for the prodigals. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. God, we pray for Israel and we pray for Palestine and we pray for all these other countries surrounding Israel, God. 
um, we just pray for protection for all these countries, God. We pray for the people that have been injured, God, that they would be healed. And we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones in this wartime, God, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength. I would like to lift up my friend to you, God. I just pray for healing and that you would be uh, with their family and that they would feel your presence. I pray for all the people that have lost loved ones, God. I just pray that you would um, give them peace, comfort, and strength and just let them feel your presence in the absence of their loved one. God, we pray for all the disasters, too, all over the world, God. We just pray that you would meet these people where they are, that you would be the hands and feet, that you would send the hands and feet of Jesus to minister to them. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, well, I made it without falling asleep, not that praying to God is boring to me but sometimes when you shut your eyes and you relax just that little bit it's hard to stay focused and stay awake but we made it okay so I want to start in John 14 3 and I had time to number these today even though I didn't do a very good job and I had to go back in and renumber Okay, so this is Jesus talking to his apostles. He said, Let not your heart be troubled. This is 14.1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. And he also said in 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. So that was John 14, 6. I just threw it in there too. So Jesus came. He walked among men. He performed many, many miracles. Many people saw him. He loved the people that the Pharisees would not love. He chose men that were not the most religious Jews. One of them was a tax collector. A couple were fishermen. You know, they just, they did different things. So he walked among men, he performed miracles, he preached and taught God's word to so many, to thousands. Then he died for every one of us. And he was buried for three days. Then he rose. And then he ascended. And so, he ascended to heaven to the right-hand side of God. And so, he went where Jesus is right now is preparing a place for us. And I feel like he'll either come get us in the rapture, or if we succumb to death before then, I think he'll come get us then too. That just really dawned on me the other day. I was thinking about this verse. And I was going, I think he's the one that comes and gets us. Or sends someone when we die. 
anyway, that just really stood out to me the other day, so it's not a coincidence that we're looking this up now. Okay, so let's see what the number two verse is in here on this list. There is no number two. Go with that one. All right, well, let's move to Thessalonians. I have three on there. I must have skipped two. Like I said, I was re, I kept redoing these. Let's go to 1 Corinthians um, 15, 52. We're going to skip over. I was going to go to Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, but let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. Here it is. Um, starting with 52. And this is talking about the rapture. Now, this does not say rapture. And so you're going to find people that go, the word rapture is not in the Bible. Well, that's true. The word harpazo is in the Greek version. Um, in the King James, I believe it's caught away. Um, it doesn't say rapture, but in the Bible, it doesn't say Bible either. And in the Bible, it doesn't say the Trinity either. So there's just words that we use uh, to describe things that are not actually in the Bible. But this, this is going to be so quick. And I think the urgency that I have so much is that I think people think that they're going to have the chance to get saved when they see Jesus in the clouds. But there's not going to be time. It has to be done now. You need to do it now. You need to quit putting it off and do it now because there's not going to be time. And this is why I'm fixing to read to you why there is not going to be time. Um, I'm going to skip back up to 1551. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Okay, that is our spiritual body that we will get. We will all get a spiritual body. If you're saved, you're going to get a spiritual body um, to spend eternity in. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, I do not know how fast that is, but like a blink of an eye is a very fast. Um, the twinkling of an eye, I don't know whether that's longer, but it is not long at the last trump. So we're going to hear trumpets. And Jesus is going to be accompanied with trumpets. We're going to hear trumpets when Jesus comes. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. So people that are saved, that are buried, that may be us. It may not be us. We may not have to die a death here. Um, they shall be raised incorruptible. So they will get their incorruptible body. Their spirit is in heaven with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, the angels and all the saints. But they will get their incorruptible body and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption so we will get a perfected body that's what incorruptible is it's like it's perfect and this immortal must be put on immortality so we will be immortal so when this corruptible shall have on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory 
O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Okay, then he just moves on to something else. Okay, that doesn't have anything to do with what he was saying. Rest of 15 is also talking about the end times, too. But I'm not going to read all of it. I'm not going to read all of it tonight. That was the point that I wanted to make tonight, is that um, in a moment... In the twinkling of an eye, that's so fast. No time to get saved. It's going to be like so quick. I don't snap very well. It's going to be so quick. We need salvation now. People need to be saved now. Okay, so let's see what else we can read. Let's go read uh, 1 Thessalonians. Four. First Thessalonians four says this. Okay, I'm gonna read I think first Thessalonians four. I'll read all of four. Well, and even part of five. Wait a minute, let's see where they say to start. We'll start with... Okay, let's start with 13. So, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So the dead, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, harpazo, caught up, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Okay, this is not the second coming of Christ. When Jesus comes the second time and puts his feet on earth again, it will be at the end of the tribulation, and it will be so that he can defeat all evil. So this is not when this is. This is the rapture. And this is when Jesus comes to get his bride. When Jesus comes to get his church. When Jesus comes to get his believers. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, I don't know how much you've heard 
peace and safety lately that I have and it's not a true peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape but ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief See, we will know we will see the signs because we have read God's Word and God's Word has all kinds of signs in here of the end times so we will know we will know ye are the children of light and the children of the day we are not of the night nor of darkness therefore let us not sleep as do others but let us watch and be sober for they that sleep sleep in the night and they that be drunken are drunken in the night but let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for a, an helmet the hope of salvation for god hath not appointed us to wrath so god's children were not appointed to wrath but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. So, it's going to be quick. We're not going to have time to get saved. People who need to get saved, need to get saved now. I just feel like there are a lot of things going on spiritually that we can't see, that we don't know. So, people need to be ready. They need to be ready. Like, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you saved? Have you been saved through Jesus? Okay, let's read um, Titus 2.13. Yeah, Titus 2.13. It's at the back. Farther back here. I have a hard time finding Titus. It's I think it's farther back than what it really is. Okay, Titus 2.13 says, Looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing. The glorious appearing. That is going to be when we see Jesus in the clouds of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. So, um, so another verse about the glorious appearing of Jesus. So we look forward to that. So let's read, um, Let's read Revelation 1, 7 and see what it is. Let's just read 1 down through 7. Well... through eight one through eight okay so this is the revelation of John that was 
so hot while ago, now it's getting really cold. Okay, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for a time is at hand. Uh, Revelation is one of the, it may be the only book where there is a blessing uh, from reading it. I'm not sure. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. So let's read to, I like this part too, um, the opening of the seals. I love this part where they open the seals. And they can't find anyone in heaven that is worthy to open the seals. So let's read that, and then we will read Revelation 3.10. But let's read this first. And I saw the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne and when he had taken the book the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors which are the prayers of saints and they sung a, a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, and the elders, and the numbers of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain, to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength 
and honor and glory and blessing in every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb for ever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the twenty and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth for ever and ever. And I'm not going to read the opening of the seals, but that is who Jesus is. Jesus is the only one that is worthy to open this book of seals which is the deed of earth. I actually listened to John MacArthur this afternoon. And so this is redeeming the earth back to God and away from the evil. That's what this is beginning. That's what those seals are about. It's going to be judgment on the earth. And I promise you, you do not want to be here for this. You don't want to be here for this. As far as Revelation is, I really believe that God has started cleansing the church. He has started cleansing the bride. I think that's what last year was about, was a cleansing of the bride, a uniting of the bride, not under a roof, but under Jesus. And I feel like he has already started doing that. So the next thing will be <clears throat> Jesus opening the scrolls him opening the seals. I don't know if he's done that yet because um, the first seal is um, the Antichrist. And I believe the Antichrist is already here. But he hasn't made his way up on the stage to let everybody know who he is. But I believe he's here on this earth. I don't believe it's a thing where the Antichrist needs to be born. I think he's already been born, and I think he's already living here on this earth. And um, I believe he's close to taking the stage. And he will after the rapture. After what we read tonight, after the rapture, the Antichrist will go to Israel and all these countries, and he'll make a false peace treaty with them. But it won't last forever. And it will be... Um, it will be under his terms, not under Israel's terms. Okay. So I think that, um, oh, what is 310? Okay, I don't think I'm going to read that. Okay, so that is all the scripture. I would like to read you what my uh, listening to I Can Only Imagine. That's quite fitting. Um, I want to read you what I wrote. So this song, I've heard this song before, but I really listened to it today. And uh, I love the lyrics to this song. It's called um, Getting Ready. It's called Getting Ready, and I thought, well, that goes with the uh, Are You Ready? And um, it's by Maverick City Music and Upper Room. And the lyrics are about the marriage of the Lamb, which will take place after the rapture. Um, I think during the tribulation. I'm not real sure. So don't quote me on that. But the marriage of the Lamb will take place in heaven. And uh, how it is coming. They were talking about how it is coming. And how they're getting ready. You know, in their hearts for this time. This special time. That we are going to be. Um, as the bride of Christ. Our bridegroom is Jesus, how we are going to be with Jesus forever. So we need to be ready. Wow, these are awesome lyrics. I've heard this song before, but I haven't heard it in a few weeks. 
we can only imagine <laughs> we can only imagine what this is going to be like so are you ready I woke up before 5 a.m. this morning and I just couldn't get comfortable so I got up and started listening to some prophetic preachers and just listening to what the rapture will be like whenever it comes I just got through listening to John MacArthur talk about the tribulation from the whole book of Revelation he went through the whole book of Revelation and hit the highlights of every chapter I really like I have a book on Revelation that he wrote a study book and I really like it so I choose the rapture in the marriage of the Lamb what do you choose I don't know why anyone would choose the tribulation when there is more in heaven with Jesus there is <laughs> there is more I have my there is more t-shirt on there is more there is so much more in heaven than there is on this earth the very most beautiful place on this earth will not compare to heaven in the way that heaven looks I look forward to the glorious appearing of Jesus and to be ushered into a place that is perfectly beautiful with love joy and peace only I mean there is no there is no confusion in heaven there is no confrontation in heaven there is no drama in heaven there is only peace love and joy and so all the things that we have here on this earth there is no deception in heaven there is no lying in heaven there are no things to be addicted to in heaven that people get stuck being addicted to here and it just like ruins their lives um, I'm ready whenever that day or hour come I feel like it is soon but really only God knows the day or hour we read that earlier only God knows the day or hour we are called to be ready we are we're called to be ready we're like uh, Paul said we're called to be sober we are called to not be asleep not not be thinking that it's never gonna come and just putting it out of our mind we're supposed to be ready every day so I so look forward to kingdom worship in heaven all nations races and tongues in unity as it should be here and it's not like that here so are you ready call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. Uh, the time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. So if you are not saved today, please consider accepting... Oh, where's my invitation? God's invitation. I dropped all my little things last night, but I got them. God's invitation to his heaven. Because heaven belongs to him. He created it. Just like he created this earth and everything in it. Everything belongs to him. We don't... Nothing belongs to us. We just... Everything's on temporary borrow here. Uh, we're not taking anything with us you know I like my jewelry I like my phone I like things that I have but I'm not taking any of it with me there won't be any time to pack a bag thank goodness we don't have to pack okay so this is God's invitation to his heaven so have you ever been invited I gotta turn this fan on so when I shut the door in here it gets a little warm have you ever been invited? The time is now to respond to his invitation. Repent and turn to the one true God. So here are some scriptures about salvation. As it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. 
Romans 3.10 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 But God commandeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 9 through 11. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved Romans 10:13 So just like what we read a while ago we were reading about revelation this is a description of what the new uh heaven and earth will be like So this is John that saw this and I John saw the holy city new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Revelation 21, 2 through 3. Wow, that just, that reminds me of something that we read in Exodus, where God came and filled the temple, but his glory was so much that they couldn't not even Moses could go in the temple with him and so we are going to live with God and he is going to live with us and so it's not going to be like God is in one part of this temple God is going to be the light throughout the temple and that is so cool because no one has really been able to live with God. And so we're going to live with God. Um, this new heaven that's going to come out of... This new Jerusalem that's going to come out of heaven. Okay, I'm sorry, I sidetracked. But I have to say things when I think of them or I forget. Okay, so this is a prayer... This is a Jesus people, <laughs> Jesus people advertisement in the middle of my music. Okay, so I'm going to say this prayer, and if you would like to repeat it after me, you can. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus is your one and only Son. Oh, I need to sneeze. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You were buried for three days and rose from the dead. I believe you ascended to heaven and are preparing a place for me. Yeah, we, we hit on that tonight too. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and my life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Clean my heart and help me to glorify you.
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So if you said that prayer and you invited Jesus to be your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is now being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the angels are rejoicing in heaven. But today is day one of your Christianity journey, and so if you want a closer relationship with God, then start reading His Word. Read His Word, pray, find some praise music that you like. And also, pray for God to find you a church to fellowship in. And Jesus got baptized. Baptism is a symbol of putting away our old life and uh, raising back up to a new life with Jesus. Um, if the rapture happens tonight and you said a sincere prayer, You'll be in heaven. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified through God, I mean, by God, through Jesus, his son. Because the rapture could happen at any time. That's why we need to be ready. So, um, I hope that someone heard this message. And I hope that um, they were inclined to get saved. Or share with somebody else that needs salvation. Um, I am going to do a blessing from God. And I saw my friend Josie for a few seconds, but she probably got a phone call. Okay, I'm trying to memorize this. So this is Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. Oh, yeah, upon thee and give thee peace. So maybe I'll get it memorized someday. Who knows? So I hope you have an awesome rest of your night. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them in the comments. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you need prayer, leave that in the comments. And um, have an awesome tomorrow. Tomorrow's Saturday. I don't have any huge plans tomorrow. But um, much love and cyber hugs. Until I see you again, good night.